in this question, we want to find the volume of the, uh, this is a question from the textbook, uh, question number 33. We want to find the volume of the solid that is between the sphere, rho equals cosine phi, and the hemisphere, rho equals 2, with the z's that are greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Well, we have to figure out, well, what exactly is this sphere? I mean, they're telling us that it's a sphere, but it's in a strange equation. See, with, uh, with this, we understand that this is the sphere of radius 2 centered at the origin. Rho equals 2. All the points a distance 2 away from the origin. That's great. We understand that. Um, we only want the upper half of it. Z is positive or equal to 0. But this is a strange equation for a sphere. We have to figure out what's going on with it. And so we need to transform this equation to figure out exactly what, what is this sphere, where is it at, and how can we then um, use it to find the volume. And so uh, there's the basic equations about how x, y, and z are related to, to rho, theta, and phi. And uh, the one that involves cosine of phi is that z is equal to rho cosine of phi. And so cosine of phi then would be the fraction of z over rho. Well, let's try it out. Let's go rho equals to z over rho. Or, you know, we can multiply by rho and end up with rho squared equals to z squared. And we know what rho squared is. Rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, z over rho, we multiply both sides by rho, we get just z on the other side there, sorry. So we have, uh, this uh, is all what rho squared is, and now this is equal to z. So now it's starting to look like a sphere. If we can just uh, ship this guy over and complete the square, we'd have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus z plus something to complete the square is equal to zero, once we subtract the z over, plus the same thing that we're going to add to complete the square. The x squared and y squared are fine, they're perfect squares, and what we're going to have is z, the coefficient on um, z here, we take half of that, and that's what goes in here with the z, quantity squared, and that's the perfect square, the number that we have to add to both sides to make that happen is the square of that, which is one fourth. Balance it out, add it to the other side, and we have exactly then that the sphere is centered at um, zero for x and zero for y and a half for z. Zero zero a half is the uh, center of the sphere and then we'll have the radius of the sphere is also uh, a half so that's our center and then we'll have uh, the radius is equal to a half, the square root of the, the right-hand side here. So we're familiar with that. It's uh, centered on the z-axis, up a half, with the radius of a half. So it's going to go uh, down to the origin and up to 1 in z, and we have the whole sphere. And so that's why we have this picture here. We want to find the volume outside of the sphere and inside of the other. Uh, sphere there. Outside the, uh, the sphere, rho equals cosine phi, and inside the sphere, rho equals 2, the upper, the hemisphere there. We're going to set up as a triple interval. Um, and then we'll be able to check our work maybe with the uh, standard formulas for volumes of spheres. So, the triple integral is going to, we have to figure out, well, what does rho go from? And Rho with zero is at the origin, and we're interested in the in-between. So we take this uh, radial distance outward, 
and rho is going to go from here to here. We don't want we don't want this inside of this this sphere. We want it to be in between. And so on the low end, rho is here uh, cosine of phi. On the high end, rho is here two. So that's your lower bound of cosine phi, a high upper bound of 2, that's your row bound. Okay, remember the integrand is for volume dv, oh, it's the, uh, it's, you know, volume is the triple integral over e dv, but dv becomes we figured it out from the Jacobian row squared sine of phi. Okay, we have the row bounds. What about the phi bounds? So, remember, uh, z equals zero. Um, z, z equals the x-axis, the z-axis here. That's phi equals zero. And then phi comes down, and we have all these angles here. But then, by the time we get to the x-y plane, we're done. We can't have anything beyond that. Remember what we had said was that if phi is 90 degrees, this angle down from the positive z-axis, if phi is 90, then you're on the xy plane. So for phi, we go from 0 to 90. 0 to pi over 2. That's the phi bound. And the theta bound is going to be that we take in, you know, theta is the positive angle that we swing from the the, uh, the positive x-axis and so we're going to have uh, theta be 0 all the way to 2 pi. And that's going to be our volume. Not all numerical, so we can't separate like we did and try to um, make it uh, the three separate calc 1 integrals. Let's do the inner integral first where we have uh, rho cubed over 3 evaluated from cosine phi up to 2. Before we worry about these other integrals. And so we'll get 8 thirds minus cosine cubed over 3. Well, let's pull the 1 third all the way out of the other two integrals. If you pull the one-third out, we're talking about 8 minus the cosine of 5. Cubed, that is. That's our integrand. We have this sine of 5 still in there. I forgot about writing. And then we have uh, d, rho, um, d phi d theta. So what we're going to do is let u equal the cosine of phi. du is going to be negative the sine of phi, d phi. So negative du is going to take the place of that sine phi, d phi. So we'll be looking at the integral of 8 minus u cubed times a negative 1 du, or, or u cubed minus 8 that we integrate, which will give us uh, u to the 4th over 4 minus 8u. So we're going to get this outside integral. And then it's going to be one fourth of cosine of phi to the fourth minus eight times the cosine of phi. Let's evaluate it from zero to pi over two. Put a pi over two in, and those guys zero out. And don't forget the one third is still outside. Sorry about that. Um, put a pi over 2 and both of these guys zero out. And 
and then we put the zero in, and both those guys become ones. And so we'll have a fourth minus eight. And that's just going to be um, 32 over 4. So 1 minus 32 all over 4, but a negative on it. So that's 31 over 4, positive. We have the 1 third. We have the 31 over 4. And then we just integrate from 0 to 2 pi of d theta, which is just a 2 pi. So all together... 1 third and 31 over 4 and 2 pi we'll call it 31 pi over 6 and that would be our answer 31 pi over 6 units uh, cubed for the volume okay I guess we could have done it um, intuitively without triple intervals. We could find the volume of the hemisphere and subtract the volume of the full s smaller sphere here. That might have worked too. Um, but we were instructed to do it as a triple integral, so we did it that way. And so we can verify the answer by finding the volume of the inner sphere, uh, volume of a sphere, is found by taking 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we have a uh, volume of the, the full sphere there, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So r is a, a half for that guy. So we'll get the volume there to be 4 thirds pi times an eighth, or pi over 6. So this volume is pi over 6. Now the other volume is going to be half of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we have the volume of the sphere, now we have the volume of the hemisphere. volume of the hemisphere will be half of 4 thirds pi r cubed. This time r is, r is 2. And so r is 2. We have uh, essentially uh, let's write it as half uh, 4 thirds pi and an 8. And we'll call that 32 pi over 6. That's the hemisphere volume. If we take 32 pi over 6 and subtract off pi over 6, we end up with 31 pi over 6. So it verifies that we were correct. And this is doable without calculus. Okay, great.